matter which one because we'll switch in a moment. So one chin's in front of the other, look straight ahead and roll your shoulders up, back and down. And as you do that, you just want to kind of get as much movement as possible. So you're lifting them all the way up, pushing them all the way back and down and then go the other way. And then keep the shoulders down and we'll move the head, chin to chest, and then chin to sky. And as you lower the chin, the back of your neck lengthens. Three more. Last one. And then looking straight ahead, we'll look over one shoulder and let your eyes keep going even when your head can't go any further. Really stretching the side of your neck. One more each side. And then we'll again use your ribs so your elbows can kind of bend. You're moving your rib cage side to side. Weight is trying to stay equal, so we're not shifting the weight in your hips as well, just the ribs. Three, two, and one. And then we'll walk ourselves forward. So you're going to take your hands in front of your shins, keeping a flat back if you're feeling like any protectiveness in your lower back right now. But if you feel really good about it, you can roll all the way forward, allowing your head to drop down, sometimes bending the elbows to hold your forehead, or even making like a hot potato with your hands and allowing your head to drop down onto them. Relax your shoulders. We're going to stay here for about a minute and just get comfortable in our hips. So the hips should be opening. The lower back may be feeling a little bit of a release. Might feel a little tension, letting go, that's a good sign. Sometimes even wiggling the toes helps you know where you're holding stress and tension. You want to try to be as heavy into the hips as you're just resting down into the floor as much as you can. And as we stay here, you may have noticed you can get your head a little lower because your back releases a little bit. And one more breath. And then coming back up and we'll switch. So the other leg goes in front now. And we can rock side to side a little bit so there's equal weight in your hips. And then we'll roll the neck this time, so chin down, ear to shoulder, and you're looking up at the ceiling and lifting your head as the head falls to the back. So you don't hear or worse yet feel any crunching of the neck. Just feel maybe a, a big release. Or a big stretch. Go the other way. Breathing. Trying not to breathe with your shoulders, so your shoulders are staying down. Breathing into the lungs one more time. And then looking straight ahead, and we'll lift the shoulders and just drop them down. So lift them high and drop them low. Up and down one more time. And then push one shoulder forward and the other back. It's kind of like a little shimmy, allowing the shoulder blades to stay squeezing together. Three. Two, one more each side. And then the hands again come to the thighs and we'll circle the ribs in one direction. And then circle in the other. Last one. And then walk yourselves down with this leg in front. Again, you can stay with a flat back or if you want a little extra round over and holding the head hot potato in the hand wherever you are and it may feel way different from one side to the other. Sometimes we're tighter in one hip and we want to release. And exhale. And again, we're going to stay here for about a minute. So try to get comfortable. And by comfortable, I mean try to ease the tension by breathing it out. If you're too comfortable, you probably could make it harder. So it shouldn't be like you can take a nap here. You want to feel a, a nice 
full lengthening of maybe the lower back or the outside of the hips or maybe even the center of the butt cheek, you're going to feel it where you're tight. And that's not necessarily wrong, but it just might, might, might not be what I'm feeling on any given day. My hips are always tight. I always feel it through the piriformis muscle or through the lower back. Some more breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. to be able to get your head down. So you do want the head to be able to release down. 
Your butt is going as close to the heels as you can comfortably allow. And arms stretched out in front of you, you can turn your palms up to the ceiling, gently rotating the shoulders open, and feeling maybe a nice stretch way high through the shoulders. Don't overdo this. You don't want to feel any pinching. Pinching is usually a negative thing, so you got away from that. Take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, roll up and flip around so now your legs are in front of you. And they can stay hips width apart if we're protecting our back from anything today. So the knees can be hips width. Sit up as tall as you can. Feel like someone's pulling a string out of the top of your head and towards the sides of the room through the shoulders. And we'll start with the lower back. We're going to tuck the tailbone under, scoop the abs, roll into a C-curve. And once we've found the C-curve, keeping the shoulders squeezing together, bring the shape forward over your hips and then bring it back. Abs pull in, forward and back. Abs really tight, forward and back. So the shape of your abdominals doesn't change. The shape of your back doesn't change. We're just kind of moving or hinging the shape at the hip. Now we're going to lower back to our challenge point where we almost feel like we're going to fall over. Keep the collar open. Lift the arms up in you. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Now lift the arms up. Keep the scoop of the lower abs. Roll the shoulders down your back and together. Hold for five. Scoop the abs a little lower. Three. Scoop a little lower. Two. And roll all the way down. So once we get there, kind of relax your hips back out. Tail out. And we'll, uh, let's take your hands by your side. So they're just kind of pushing down. A little activity through the upper body so the shoulders are pulling down to the floor. And we'll tuck and release the hips like we did when we were kneeling, just allowing now to have a little tactile cue of the mat, giving us some feedback as we pull the abs in. You should feel the length happening of the lower back. So as the tail lifts, the lower back lengthens. And we don't want to overdo this and then jam the lower back into the mat and really squeeze the glutes too hard. It's a very um, gentle motion where you feel the ribs and hips kind of tighten in the front, like the ab abdominal muscles in the front are tightening and the lower back muscles, if you feel anything in the lower back, they might be lengthening out like a little stretch. Now keep the tail as neutral as possible. Neutral is where your pubic bone and your hip bones become one plane where you could kind of put your coffee there and it wouldn't spill. Maintain that as much as you can and we're going to bring your right knee into tabletop. Now keep the tail sticking out the abdominals tight. Lift the left leg to meet in tabletop. Now, in, and they can be hips width apart. So in your tabletop, you're gonna lower one leg down and pull it back in, and then the other. So we're trying not to change the shape of the leg. We're not stretching it out or dropping the heel to your butt. You are maintaining the shape of the leg as you lower it down toward the floor and pull it back in. So changing the shape may change the weight, meaning make it way easier for you to do. Like if you're just bringing your heel to your butt, that's not very hard. But to move the foot toward the floor, that is more challenging. And why we call it toe taps but don't want you to touch the floor is kind of a mystery to me. But we, because we don't want to touch the floor, because if you were to tap down and lift back up, you can almost feel how your back wants to do it for you. So we want to almost touch the floor and pull back in. So it's abs all the time, 100% of the time. It's your abdominal wall that has to do the work. Now let's lower one foot all the way down than the other and tuck and release the hips a few more times and now you may feel like oh my back seems a little tired so you if hopefully that's not the case but if it is not a big deal you just know that you just used your back to do that exercise so we might need to keep you in more of a supported abdominal uh, position today for almost all of the hour which is not wrong we want to eventually get you into neutral pelvis so you're using your abs in the most lengthened form but to Protect your back, use them. Your abs are there for you. So now we're gonna lift the upper body. So you're pulling the chin in, and you're gonna exhale to curl up head, neck, and shoulders, and look between your thighs. Inhale to stay right here, and exhale to lower back down. 
two, lengthen the chin, pulling it in, the back of the neck lengthens. You exhale, feel like someone's pulling that strength through your third eye center. You're looking maybe between your knees, hold as you inhale, exhale to lower back down. Inhale, pull in the chin. Exhale, curl up, open the collar. Inhale to stay. Exhale, lower down. Again, last time, inhale, pull in the chin. Exhale, curl up. Inhale to stay. And exhale, lower back down. Now, with the right knee in tabletop, pause here. And then left leg meets it. So your abs are in. Now squeeze the legs together as one. Same upper body curl. So pull the chin in. Curl up head, neck, and shoulders. Look at your thighs. Keep the collar open. Lengthen the neck. And don't change the lower body or the pelvis as we lower back down. Inhale, pull in the chin. Exhale, curl up. Inhale to stay. And exhale, lower down. All right, we're going to stay up for what's called the hundred. So pull the chin in. Exhale, curl up. Maybe stretch the legs out and start to pulse the arms. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Now you can keep the knees bent if you'd like. Or you can even drop the feet to the floor if you're feeling a little better about that today. What we don't want is you to feel neck tension. So if you need to keep your head down for in a whole inhale and exhale repetition, go for it. Ideally, though, if you're squeezing the shoulder blades together on your back body, you shouldn't feel the need to do that because your upper back muscles are really helping to stabilize the neck in its lifted position. Inhaling through the nose and exhale. Through the mouth. And exhale. 80, inhale. Last breath. Bend the knees and curl up higher. And release everything down. So now we're going to keep the legs straight. Squeeze them in towards center so your inner thighs are glued towards each other. And your arms are going to reach out or up over your shoulders. So we're going to find our happy spot. So we're going to make arm circles. So the arms are going to go up over our head and circle around to our hips. As we do this with our arms, these big arm circles, I want you to pay close attention to your rib cage and to make sure that the ribs don't change position. So as the arms lift up, sometimes the ribs want to float up to the ceiling to kind of counterbalance the circle. So you have to make sure that you're going only as high as your ribs can stay close. Go the other way with your circles because sometimes that actually helps or changes it. Do two more here. I know we did a lot more in the other direction. Now keep the rib to hip connection tight. Squeeze the legs together. Arms are in that happy spot where I can't push them down to the mat or my rib cage lifts. So I'm finding that halfway point. Inhale, start to lift the arms. Squeeze the legs together to help you to roll up through the center. Reach past the feet, abdominals, pull in, hold here, and then roll back through the center. Dropping the lower back down first. And again, stopping at that happy spot with your arms. Inhale, start to lift. Exhale, continue rolling through the spine and then rolling back down. Lower back touches down first and following through. Inhale, start to lift. Exhale, continue. Keep the back reaching in the curved position. So you are trying to keep your pelvis neutral throughout. So at the top, you get a really good hamstring stretch if at the top you let your hips just fall forward. But we want to keep the hip bones reaching behind us so we're maintaining the curve of the spine even at the top of the exercise. Two more here. Squeeze the legs together. Inhale. Exhale. Reach. If your feet come off the mat, that is an absolute indication that your lower back is helping you out. So really try to anchor your heels into the floor. Squeezing the legs together and stretching the toes really does help with that. And rolling back down through the center of the spine. Bring your hands down by your sides. And again, you might need to adjust um, your hips weight equal in both hips. Let's lift your right knee into tabletop and then straighten the leg all the way to the ceiling. And you want to feel as though the top of your femur, the leg bone, is pulling down into the floor. Now keep your right leg exactly where it is. 
and straighten the left. Now, if you could do that without the right knee bending or falling away from you or just your hip flexor freaking out, we're going to keep the left leg straight. If we need to bend it, that's okay. If your leg is straight, you will not feel much of a connection between your lower back and the mat, and that is also okay because you're in an elongated position. But your pelvis is in neutral, your lower abs are pulling in, your right leg is as straight as possible. You inhale for half a circle, you exhale to complete it. Inhale half a circle, exhale to complete it. Feel like you're pulling the leg bone towards the floor as you're reaching the toes towards the ceiling. So there's an opposition of being grounded but rising up. We want all the length of the leg we can get. One more time. But we want the hip to be the stability. Go the other way. Inhale, half a circle. Exhale. So there's no rocking of the pelvis side to side. So you may notice one day you can make bigger circles than the very next day, and that's okay. Five. How big your circle is, it does not indicate anything. It's not like a barometer of how good a person you are or something. Two more. And then bend the knee and give it a little squeeze. Maybe bring the right knee over to the right shoulder. Circle the right ankle a little bit. Maybe flex the left foot so you can feel a little stretch to the front of the hip. Maybe circle the right ankle in the other direction. And then left hand to the outside of the right thigh. And we'll do a knee down twist. You're gonna pull the knee across the body, opening the chest. Maybe even coming into a T position or a goal post with your arms. Whatever makes you feel a better stretch through the front of the chest. And breathe here. We're going to take a few breaths here. Try to feel our body sink towards the floor. So be heavy into the mat. So again, instead of gripping and holding and um, maintaining tension, you want to try to release. back to center and once we get here again we might need to wiggle a little bit so that we have equal weight in the hips let's start with the right knee bent foot flat bend your left knee into tabletop stick the binds out find your neutral pelvis stretch the left leg all the way up and again we want to keep the left leg straight and here and lengthen the right leg down if we can now if anything changed and it may be different from leg to leg so don't worry about that either you're going to Plug the left leg bone down towards the floor. Inhale for half a circle. Exhale to complete it. Your abdominals pull in and down the whole time. Inhale and exhale. Five. Seven. Abs stay tight. Reverse direction. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and Take your right hand to the outside of your thigh and pull the leg across. Maybe getting a knee down twist, or maybe getting a little snap, crackle, pop. This is a knee down twist, so you will definitely be getting that. And arms come out to a T. Be heavy, maybe into a goal post if you can. And you'll feel the stretch, particularly through the front of the collar, definitely through the low back, the side body love handle area. Relax your toes. Sometimes wiggling your fingers and toes again really helps you find where you're stressing out. Isn't that fun how we can stress out in our body, but we do. One more deep breath here. And then coming back to center. And we'll roll up to the top. So you can use one leg as a leverage to pull you up to seated. The legs come out in front of you and we're going to flex the feet so your legs are straight. 
If this is too much for you to get your neutral pelvis and your legs straight, just bend your knees a little bit and that should help you stay upright. Your arms come out to the side. If you don't have room, you can bend the elbows and pop the elbows up to the side like praying arms. Roll your shoulders back, twist to the right, get tall, taller, tallest. Come back to center, keep the height. Other side, inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale, center, twist, two, Inhale, 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 exhale, center, two more each side, taller, tallest, keep the height, so sometimes we sink into our pelvis when we come back on top of it, but we want to lengthen out of it, taller, two, three, keep the height, last time, inhale, 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 and exhale, center, let's scooch forward if you need to, because we do want mat behind you, Legs are, again, hips width apart. Arms reach out in front of you. Shoulders roll down your back. Tuck the tailbone under, scoop the abs, and roll back. So you're scooping the tail, tucking it under, squeezing your shoulder blades. Hold this. We're going to bring your right knee up over your hip for starters. And just pull the right knee in towards your chest. Eight, seven, six. Keep the collar open. Three, two, one. Lower down left leg. Eight. Weight in both hips. Four, three, two. Now hold on to the shin or ankle of the left side and then bring your right leg to meet it. Now squeeze the legs as close together as you can. Push your elbows out to the sides of the room and look right at your knees. Keep scooping the lower abs as you inhale to roll backwards. Exhale to come up. Inhale, roll. Exhale, lift. Inhale back. Exhale up. Inhale, five. Think of the lower back or the whole back being kind of rolled out. So you're really rolling each one of your spinal notches on the way down and on the way up. Two to go. Hold here at the top. Move your hands to the outer thighs and roll down. Now kind of lengthen your lower back out, but you're still going to keep the abdominals pulled in towards the floor. Open the collar by squeezing your shoulder blades together, and then move your hands to the front of your thigh. Stretch your right leg out, and then your left. So you reach, and reach. You lengthen, and lengthen. Abdominals pull down and up towards your throat. Five, four, three, Two, one more time each side. Now bend both knees, roll your head, neck, and shoulders down, bring your hands behind your head. Elbows wide, shoulders drop. Pull the chin in, and then exhale, curl up head, neck, and shoulder. Now with your legs not moving, we're gonna twist opposite arm, hip to thigh, twist. As you twist, your hips stay as steady as possible. So we're not allowing the weight to shift with us in the pelvis, it's just the upper body. Now we'll add the legs, same bicycle motion, reach, reach, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Abs stay as nice and tight. Two more, inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale, last one. And lower all the way down with your head, neck, and shoulders. Hands can come down by your sides. Stretch the legs all the way up over your hips. Let's cross the left leg in front of the right. The knees can turn out, but we don't want to bend too much. So try to get the legs as straight as possible. Push the shoulder blades into the floor. Push the hands into the mat. Pull the lower abs down. So we're going to tuck the tail, basically, like we did at the beginning. And lift the legs. So we're rolling, tucking, under abs engaging to round the hips up. Four more, three, shoulders open, and other leg in front. Roll eight, seven, six, abs stay tight each time. Three, two, and one. Release the feet down to the floor, and bring your hands to your ears like you're pulling on a hat. So we're gonna pull on our hat, Pull the chin in, lengthening the back of the neck. 
and curl up head, neck, and shoulders and lift between your thighs. Then we're going to take this hat off and then circle our arms around to your hips. So you take your hat off and you circle around. Now as you do this, your shoulders don't rest down on the mat. They don't actually change position at all. If anything, they go up a little higher when your hands come by your hips. So you try to get a little more of a crunch each time without losing it. So it's exhale up, inhale open. Exhale a little higher, inhale open. One more time. Exhale and inhale and we'll lower everything down. Now one knee at a time comes into tabletop and with our legs in tabletop, squeeze them together. Pull the lower abs into the mat so we're doing a little sinking there. Push the legs away and pull back in. Push the legs away, inhale, exhale, pull back in. Stretch and bend. Stretch and bend. Four more. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And keep the knees bent. Bring your hands to your ears like you're pulling on your hat again. Curl up head, neck, and shoulders. Look at your thighs. Now everything's going to go together. So you stretch out and then you curl up. The chest still doesn't drop. The lower the legs go, the harder it is on your abs. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale. Two more. And release everything down. Good. Your feet again come hips width apart, but we're going to make sure there's a 90 degree angle behind the knee. So your feet may be a little further away from you than you really want them to be. Pull the abs in, push the hands down into the floor, and we're going to lift the hips. So we're going to solidify the space between your ribs and hips in the front body. Squeeze the glutes a bit to lift the hips. Hold and feel like you just went karate chopped at the hips and drop back down. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, lower. Inhale, exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale, lower. Two more. Watch your feet. Make sure your weight's equal in your big toe and your baby toe. And lower. Good. And then right leg comes up, left leg comes up. Let's straighten the legs all the way. Hands come behind your thighs and you're going to curl up and look at your thighs. But we don't want to round the lower back too much. You're still trying to maintain neutral pelvis. So stick your buns out. And then we're going to take both hands to one shin um, or calf and lower the other leg. Lower, lower, switch. So it's reach, reach, return. Abs pull in, abs pull in. Abs, abs. Inhale, inhale, exhale. So we switch on the exhale. And the leg that comes towards you, if you need a little extra hamstring help, you can flex the foot. It will make a big difference, but it's really hard to have your feet do different things. So if that's too much for your brain right now, don't worry about it. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Two more each leg. Last one. And release back down. All right, so your feet come back down to the floor. Your hands come back down to the floor. We're again going to lift your hips up. Now we're going to squeeze the buns, pull the abs tight, open the collar, and lift the left leg straight up over your hip. Now once it's there, hold. Lower it down. Now squeeze the left butt cheek as you lift the right leg straight up over your hip and make sure your hips stay level. Lower the foot. And drop back down. One more time. Lift the hips. Lift the right leg first this time. Keep the hips level. Lower the foot. Squeeze the right butt cheek as you lift the left. And hold. Everything level. And lower. And drop the hips. We're going to flip over onto your belly. So your hands come under your shoulders, almost like they're hovering. Your legs are close together. Your abdominals are in and your neck is long. You're going to exhale and straighten your arms up overhead like you're a straight line. And then inhale to lift into extension, hands coming back towards your heels. Exhale forward. Inhale up and back. Exhale forward. Inhale up and back. Three more. One more time. And then release down. You're going to stack your hands under your forehead like 
like we did before, and still kind of squeeze your legs together. Pull your abdominals up away from the floor. Your right leg is gonna come in, pointed, flex, and reach, left leg. Point, flex, reach. So as you pull the leg in, there's a little pulse. Inhale, inhale, then an exhale to reach. If that aggravates your knee, you just omit the pulsing, and you can just pull the leg in, point, flex, and reach it away. The abdominals stay pulled up the whole time, and the glutes really push down to keep your hips from pocketing up. So you really wanna push the hips down throughout. Inhale, inhale, exhale. You should feel the hamstring. Inhale, inhale, exhale. One more each side. Now keep the, let's switch the palm on top, but keep the head down. Heels together, toes apart, and we're gonna push the hips down into the floor and feel like the, you're opening the front of the pelvis. Pull the abs up away from the floor without changing much, really, and squeeze the heels together five times. Squeeze them in, tighter, tighter, a little tighter, so as tight as you can, and then release everything the way that you could. Push your hips down, pull your abs up, squeeze the heels, tight, tighter, 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 the tightest you can, and release. Again, wiggle your toes, squeeze it out. Last time, abs in, hips down, squeeze the heels. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Okay, we're gonna pop back up onto all fours. So you're on your hands and knees again. And we can happy cat this time. So you're gonna bring your right ear to your right hip, and then your left ear to your left hip, so side to side, same side. Be very happy wagging the tail. And then find your neutral position, shoulders hugging down your back, maybe softening the elbows. Curl your toes under, pull your abs up, and lift the knees to hovering. So you're gonna lift the knees, hold as you inhale, and then exhale, lower back down. So your ribs in, shoulders drop, tail out, exhale to lift, Inhale to stay, exhale to lower. Open the collar, pull the abs in, exhale to lift. Inhale to stay, exhale to lower. One more time. Pull the abs in, draw the shoulders down, exhale lift. Inhale and exhale to lower. Good, you can shift back into child pose, drop your head, maybe even spin your palms back up to the ceiling. And just take a little inventory or kind of scan of your back. See how everything feels. Anything tight, your wrists, your knees, your ankles. Take another deep breath in. And roll up. And we're gonna flip around. So now our legs are out in front of us. So your legs are a little wider than hips width. Sitting equal on your hips. Again, your knees can bend for this one if that's what needs to happen. Arms come out to the side, twist get tall, taller, tallest, and then dive your head and kind of saw off your baby toe, and then re-establish length and unwind. Inhale, twist, exhale, dive, roll back up, and unwind. Inhale, twist, exhale, dive, roll up, unwind. Scoop the abs back a little lower, maybe. 
Lift your right knee, hold on behind the thigh, and then lift your left leg and hold on behind the thigh. Now roll the shoulders back, stretch and bend. Stretch and bend. So we're just trying to maintain a balance here. Now you're gonna walk up to the ankle maybe, or a little higher than your knees. Keep the collar open and roll back between your shoulder blades. Exhale, come up and pause. Woo, take that soft forward. Inhale back. Use your abs to stop you. It helps to breathe too. Inhale, lower back. Exhale. Really rolling through the small of the back. Not skipping any part of your spine. Except the neck, of course. We want to stop between the shoulders. Thanks. 